Hi guys and welcome back for another fantastic wacky. This is so crazy, oh my god, blow my head man. Video. I made myself the frame, make sure it's reasonably, well it's reasonably, make sure it is actually level. Put the uh, spirit, up on, spirit level up against it, make sure your bubble shows that it's, it's actually between two lines, that's in no it's level. What this brace is for, first of all it stops the actual frame wobbling apart, but I put the brace there to hold this bit back. When you actually put the brace in place, make sure that you are actually level on both sides or as, as much as possible. It doesn't really matter so much this way, because obviously that's the bit that you're going to adjust. What I'm doing here, I'm actually going to adjust this now because I'm actually, sorry, actually going to um, drill and fix this one in place. By well, putting the brace in place, you're stopping it from collapsing. So at that point, you can actually then get your more 10 bricks and you can actually then start basically pack it up behind there, letting it dry, once it's dry, give it a good like 24 hours, all depends on the environment, but obviously now that they're dry, I'm going to actually get this drilled, secured, and then I'll be able to move that, because I've tripped over about three times now, because that's what happens, um, and then at that point I'll show you how to do the door liner. Wall plugs, you can go with the brown wall plugs, I just use these, they seem to do the job. I've used 5 times 80 now that is massively oversized for that wall plug, but nonetheless it still holds it. Uh, that's why I like those particular wall plugs. You can get some real cheap ones that dis disintegrate, but these ones are a little bit more expensive. I'll get a close up on them, so they actually a lot. They actually look more robust, uh, more robust, um, and they are. Called a screwdriver, a drill, and ear defenders. That's pretty much it. That's what you need to do to secure that in place. So what I'm going to do now is, because I'm fed up with this, I can't wait for it to go. I'm now... Too much stuff in there. Too much stuff. I can now remove that. That can go. Boom! There we are. That is where it's meant to be. And it's still nice and true, and there's no movement. Now, what I've done to secure this in place, you can obviously, I mean, some people do it, some people don't. I've done it in the past, that's why I've learned to do it the right way. Is you sort of hold and you try your best, you put your pressure in to hold the bit of wood in, and you drill down here, and then it starts wobbling a little bit, and you drill the next one, and you drill the next one. And then we actually go to put your screws in, then your screws line up. So when the brace was there, I drilled my first hole at the bottom, making sure it was actually level and how I wanted it to be. So I drilled my hole, first hole at the bottom, undone the brace, because obviously the brickwork is going to stay. Well, there are a lot of things anyway. Um, put the wall plug in, put the drill in, uh, sorry, put the screw in, and then at that point, mark two other points out, drill those. Remove the screw, which now makes this loose. Move it out of the way. Put your wall, pl uh, wall plugs in. Move it back. Put the screw uh, back in, and then obviously the other two screws. So that is pretty much it on, on the actual internal bit. It doesn't matter if these things are not absolutely spot on level. I mean, they can be slightly out. As long as it's not really truly out, uh, it's all right. But if it's just a little bit out, it's not a problem because at the end of the day, it's your actual face plate here. That, that's, that's the thing that truly counts, uh, or what's known as the liner. This is just the bit which the liner is going to screw into, so again, it doesn't truly matter. Right, um, so here's the door liner. Also, I've already gone ahead and cut it. Now, you do your door liner, you want your top plate here, this one, you can just see, I know. That's basically got to be the, the basically, that's got to sit on top of everything. So, you don't do this bit first right at the top. You do your top plate first, and then that measurement is up to the top of that one, and so forth. Now you can buy door liners. I find door liners a bit pointless because they just look so. And most of the door liners actually overlip a little bit because they are uh, most of them are multi-sized. What I mean by that? Because you get a 30-inch door and a 27-inch door and so many different doors in between. 
so you end up actually cutting material material off. So you, you might as well just go buy your own stuff and make it yourself. It's quite straightforward. I said you measure the top fit piece first, then you measure the two side pieces. Make sure they're fit, but do a dry run as it were. Don't fix them in place. Do a dry run, and then obviously if they fit, result. You then take it all out again, and then you actually then two screws will do do the job either side. Screw this top piece down to the side pieces. Now to actually know what sort of size material you want, you measure the wall. Now the words are going to take back here. So you measure the wall. We go. Oh yes, that's a four and a half or five and a half or whatever thickness of wall. Mine is um, mine's just a shy of five and a half. So the material which I wanted, it's just a little bit bigger. So mine's actually this wood is fourteen and a half centimeters, which is just the right size. You just put that little bit over over lip, because obviously you've got to have that, because if it's completely uh, the, the same thickness as, as the wall, when you come to do your plaster, you will then have this weird gap when you do your architecture and this won't look right. So you've got to make sure your door liner is a little bit thicker than the wall is at its current state. Because when you do your plastering, you plaster it nice and smooth, so obviously it's seamless. Now there's a couple ways of uh, installing a door liner. Well, first of all, there's the right way and there's the wrong way. Uh, somebody might be looking at this going, no, no, you're completely wrong. Now, to do it properly, you do need to do the door first. Now, this is my door side, so this is the bit that's going to be hinged. So, obviously, try and imagine the door. There's no point thinking, like, getting it all perfectly level and go, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, that's perfectly level. That's the way it's going to be. Because sometimes the door is not always perfect. All depends how it's stored in the actual shop. It could be slightly warped or so forth. So what you've got to do is you've got to fix your hinge side in place, knowing that that is level. You don't have to fix the top. You can do if you really want to, but you don't have to. But you've got to fix your hinge side first, then hinge the door. When you bring the door to the shutting position, you then adjust this side to suit. It just saves a lot of aggro in the long run, rather than trying to sort of walk the door, which you're not going to do. You're not going to force the door. It's just a, trust me, it will work out better that way. So what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to fix this in place, get my door, put a couple of hinges on it. I'm not going to bother counting and sinking them in because just those, just that little bit of extra depth. So what I mean by that is, if I start sinking my hinges in, then sink the hinges on the actual door, and then do the test, obviously to get this bit level, It'll, it'll probably be a perfect fit. That's not really what you want the first time around, um, because it is just not. It's a, when you actually get around to doing it, it just won't work practically that way. You want to have the the hinges sitting on the top side of the wood, so when it touches this side, it sort of nice and tight holds it in place. So when you actually then countersink your hinges in, you then got that little bit of extra play, and that little bit of extra play I'll see uh, 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 counters for counters. You know what I mean? It, it allows it allows the wood to expand and contract. And if you do your door tight the first time around, six months time, or whenever the weather conditions changes, that door will swell ever so slightly, and then it will pinch the door shut. So by mounting the hinges on just on the top surface side and on the surface side of the door. Then obviously it fits into the inside, it's nice and tight. Obviously, so you still open it, obviously, so it's nice and tight. When you actually come around to installing the door properly, and obviously countersinking the hinges into the frame and the door, again, you will have that little bit of a gap, and then your door will be perfect. Right, when you actually put a hinge on, you want to see this section here of the actual hinge. I'm going to try and get in close if I can. It's a bit tricky because uh, it's a rubbish phone. But that part of the hinge in line with the edge. If you're, if you're unsure where to actually drill your hole for this side, if you imagine if that edge is in line with this section here, that is where you want that edge to be on the door because you want that corner to marry up with that corner. You understand? So there's no point having like, this edge level with here because then what happens is your finishing edge actually will finish inside not at the same level. So just a bit of a heads up on, on that one. Once I get the height, there's different ways of doing it. Uh, this situation, what I actually done, I clambered them in the, 
I think that's a word, it would do. Push the door up, or wedged, using the wedge at the bottom. The door as hard as I can, and I marked roughly where I want that hole to be. I actually did originally mark it there. I then actually used a square to actually get the point where I needed it to be, and then brought the door back up again to see actually where that mark was. The actual mark which I've done for here is actually down there somewhere. But because obviously I worked out those two measurements, I then drilled my first hole, drilled it in, uh, drilled it at the hinge in, and then obviously the rest of it is fairly straightforward. You know, I've only got one screw in there for now, and the second one, then put that in there. I'm now going to do the actual test to see if the door shuts. Now, annoyingly, I'm sure everyone comes across this problem. When I shut it, the bottom's clearing, so unfortunately, the top is ever so slightly touching. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut the door. Magically pinch it in my fingers, which is quite hard. Ah! As you can see, I'm struggling. So here's a little trick for you. You get your tape. This is easy if you have two hands. But get your tape, get on top of the door, and as you pull the door to you, see, it holds. I'm going to do a pencil mark, if you can hear me. Hello. Hello? I don't need pencil mark, you can't see it, but trust me it's there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the door off, give it a slight little plane, and then, it, then it should fit nicely, then we go with the next stage. Right guys, so as you can see, I've actually planed the door down now. It doesn't have to be 100% spot on, but it's best if it is. It looks nice obviously when you finished it. Now, <clears throat> this is tight here, I can literally, if I get my knife out, I can't actually get my knife down there, it is literally, it's portful, it's that tight. But don't worry too much, because this side, has got loads of gap. I mean, I can almost get my pencil down there. Not that pencil, this pencil. I probably have, here I've got about a seven mil gap. And that's because, obviously, the hinges are mounted on top of the wood, not buried within. So obviously, having it tight this side is what you want it, because then once this is actually fixed in place, when you can sink the actual hinges in, you're going to have a nice beautiful gap down there. So what you've got to do in this situation, as I said, if you actually do the door as what you think is square, when you actually come to shut it, you'll probably find that the top marries up, but the bottom doesn't. This is what I'm saying about you can't really force the door, you know, uh, you can't really sort of falsely warp the door because it won't have it. So you get your, your straight edge, you know this side's fixed, you bring your door up to that edge, but actually I find it helps that way, because obviously you know that's where that, where that, so you know where that needs to be. You bring your frame up, until, if you look, I've actually moved that in there. Pull the door out ever so slightly. It's not a straightforward, simple thing, it can take a couple of attempts. But when you look at that, pull the frame out ever so slightly, Literally, there's a couple mil like that. So if I look now, that is true all the way through. Oh, another rhyme! But when you look down, it's also true here. So when you put your left, your straight edge against, that is what you want. You want that to be level. Now the hardest thing is, you've now got to join and keep this in place, so this frame, I'm going to mark it in an obvious place, so I can see where the mark needs to be. At this point it may take a couple of attempts, you may have to open the door, find out roughly where you, you've marked that. There is another option, you can use something like this, which I do find a bit of a, a, a lifesaver. There are different types. But you've worked out to your depth, Using, all, at, using it at a sort of right angle, pinch that in place, check it, you might have to do a slight little adjustment, check it again, so I now know where that's going to be, that's where it needs to be. <clears throat> if you don't have one of these, you can use a bit of wood or something like that to sort of put a bit of wood down there, secure that in place, or put it on the side here and secure that in the place so you know when you open the door, the frame will stay where it needs to be. So what I'm going to do, I'm now going to go, I'm now going to go, losing my words, now I'm going to go ahead, open the door, 
fix that in place and basically slowly do what I need to do until it's spot on. So what I have to do is fix the top one, shut the door, make sure it all lines up again, shut the door, uh, sorry, open the door, fix it, shut the door and so forth and so forth. And repeat the process as many times as I need to until I know the door's spot on. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter too much if the wall's slightly warped. Because they're right down at the bottom here, it's great, but at the bottom there, it actually bows out quite a fair bit. You don't have to worry too much about that, because when you put your architrave on there, your architrave will cover that up, because obviously that's the whole point of having the architrave. It, it sort of disguises any, uh, any unsightliness. Um, so yes, yeah, so you don't have to worry about too much about that. But what will stand out, if the frame is wonky to the door, that will stand out more than if your wall is slightly ski with to the architrave, because the only way somebody's going to really tell that is by looking right down the side and most people put a straight edge, straight edge up against it themselves and um, and yeah, no one's going to do it. So this is the important bit to make sure that is true. Right, so there we are. We've got a line on the door installed. Now what I've done, admittedly, is what I probably should have done ages ago. I just put two screws in the side of the door, keep the sand lever on, um, which, yeah, I know. But you live in them until the tape thing was a good idea. You might be using it in, some, in another application. I don't know, but it's not no, it's still a good idea. So before you sort of say, right, that's done, let's wrap up, it's always good to do it. Just a final check. There's no harm in it. That's what makes people go, oh, wow, you're really good at that because you check, you check, and check again. You know the old saying, measure twice, cut once, all that sort of jazz. Anyway, so you get your, your level, your straight edge, you make sure the left and right frame is actually touching the spirit level, and obviously that is not being forced out by the wall. You pull the door by using the screw, and you look down the side of the door and make sure that that is as true as it can be, obviously spot on preferably. So, if it is, result, happy days. But nonetheless, that's what you got. Now, I've got a tiny little gap when I actually fix this side in. It did actually pull the frame over a little bit, which is actually really quite handy, because it's just gave me that little bit of extra spacing. So when I come and sink the hinges in, it just gives me that little bit more, and it just makes sure when the door uh, swirls and tracks, it means that it actually won't bite into the frame, and then you've got to take the door off and plane all down, all that sort of rubbish. It's a pain in the ass. Because you can't plane down your latch side. You have to plane down the hinge side, which means you've then got to recess all your hinges, and it's a, it's a plot. But anyway. I hope that that uh, tutorial was actually quite helpful and obviously answered some questions. It, uh, if not, hopefully it gave you the confidence to do it yourself. If you like this channel, give us a thumbs up. Obviously, subscribe to the channel. There's more videos on the way. Again, if you like it, thumbs up, subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, but what it does do, it does actually give me the inspiration to make more videos because it shows that you guys are actually interested in the crap I have to say. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!